Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could play it. Jessica and Sarah. Hi, John. Hi, I've got uh, Serge in the room with me. Hi, Serge. Hi there. Sarge. Okay, so, well, uh, I... Go ahead. All right, so, so I'm, I'm hoping that we, I can get uh, a briefing on uh, next steps with respect to uh, Chief, Acting Chief, and um, uh, what uh, those steps are in terms of you know, bringing some stability to the organization. So basically, I'm going to sign a contract with a new chief today, and I believe he will start on Monday. And today? Pardon me? You're bringing a new chief today? Monday. He's going to start on Monday. Who, who is this, and how did you find him or her? So his name's Matt Trinigan. And he's former chief of Waterloo. You might actually know him, Jim. He was um, he was a deputy minister, maybe when you were in Ontario. Um, but uh, he is extremely well respected in the police world. And um, the, the Solicitor General's office helped us, gave us a short list. We called the people on the short list. And he's going to bring a team with him, basically of some former chiefs with a lot of depth of knowledge that are going to come in to assist him in getting this thing to an end. And it's a short term. like. The way the contract is going to work is it's going to be somewhere between um, like a couple of months and the year end. I'm thinking probably the year end so the new board can choose the new chief, but it's basically a sort of a semi-permanent contract. It's for sort of three months to 10 months. So this is obviously a surprise. Uh... Oh, that's why I thought you might want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, what what happens to Steve? He's well, Steve is the deputy chief. I mean, I the way I see it is that this is probably going to save Steve's opportunity to become the next chief because you know the poison environment that we have right now. Anybody we put in there is not going to last very long, and Steve's going to get blamed for this. So um, he will be deputy chief and continue that way and then I think we'll have the opportunity to become the next chief. Well, this is, um, I, I guess the problem I have with this is there's been no <clears throat> process, there's no transparency, there's no um, sending out a call for people to apply and we're in the midst of a crisis and he's been the chief for, acting chief for one day and he's going to be replaced. I mean, I feel like he knows that because I had a conversation with him yesterday and I, I sort of intimated to him that we we're looking to bring someone in with, you know, knowledge and experience and a team with them to bring this thing to an end. Um, um, and, you know, I said to him, I recognize if we were to put you in there right now, like you own this. I phoned him last week, by the way, Jim, and I asked him what he would do differently if he was the chief right now, and he said nothing, which didn't instill a lot of confidence, um, actually. But I, I, I think in the long term that he will have a lot better chance of, of being able to be the, the chief of police in Ottawa if he, if he doesn't own this right now. So are you bringing this to the board today? The board's already approved it. When did they have a meeting to approve this? Yesterday. If I'm reading your press release, it's already at work to put in place a new command structure. We'll be appointing a new chief very soon. My understanding was that we were going to get through this with Steve. So it's a, it's a done deal, basically. Well, I haven't signed the contract. I mean, if you want to tell me that you don't think you want me to sign that contract, I mean, I can go back to the board and tell them that you would rather not. Um, but I actually believe this is the right thing to do, Jim. I, well, I, 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 this has come as a, a big surprise. We're in the, you know, the eve of some potential action. Obviously, something's going to happen. We think, you know, I don't have any inside information, but one assumes in the next couple of days. I think this would be very destabilizing to the organization to have someone who knows nothing about Ottawa, who's, 
I don't know this guy. Don't recognize his name. Maybe he was a deputy when I was there, but I doesn't ring a bell. He is, he is very well liked. The solicitor general told me that this the Soljan's office, our advisor on our board, is a guy named uh, Graham White. He told me that this. He called it an elegant solution. He thinks it's a very good solution on an interim basis for Ottawa. Uh, anyways, I, you know, I, I don't support this. I think this is uh, the wrong approach at the wrong time. We're going into the midst of what could be a very serious operational uh, activity. And uh, the sideshow becomes, oh, by the way, Steve, uh, we're shining you aside to a guy who doesn't know where Queen lives. Right. You know, I, you know I, I respectfully disagree. Like, I really believe that this is one in Steve's interest and two in the community interest to get some people with a lot more depth in this kind of stuff than we have internally to Ottawa police right now to get this done. And, you know, Steve, there's a lot of internal angst. I don't know how familiar you are, you are with it, Jim, but there's a lot of internal angst in that organization. I was just talking to someone right now that was telling me how they've been called off and Steve's part of it. So there, there's, inter there's internal angst in the top ranks right now. Um, and they're, they're infighting. You probably know a little bit about the infighting that's been going on in the top ranks. But I really think actually bringing someone that rises above that wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I, I guess the process has been obviously secretive. You've had no opportunity to consult the BIPOC community or other members. No, it's, a, it's, only a, it's only a short term solution. It's not the next chief of Ottawa. It's an interim until we do a search for a chief. I mean, I can't put Steve Bell in there to be the new chief without a, a search either. No. This is well, protecting think, him. Well, no, he, he listen, uh, he's entitled to apply like anyone else is who has the qualifications. Uh, so, you know, uh, I don't think there's a conflict because he's the acting chief that he can apply. But right now, it's basically a sole source contract that we are about to sign, which I fundamentally yep. disagree with. Anyway, you know, uh, it's your call, but I won't support that, and I think it'll destabilize the organization. <laughs> okay, yeah. well. Um, that's why I raised it. I, I mean, I thought you should know you you are the mayor. So if uh, if you're telling me not to do it, then I will not do it. I'll, I'll go and have another board meeting and tell them we're going to have to change again. And I'll say, I don't know what I'll say right now. Um, is there a vote of non-confidence in me or the board coming to council? I haven't seen any motions. I think you're frozen, Diane. Hello. Let me just text Can you her. Hear me? I'll text her, see if she's disconnected. I just got a, a picture of Diana frozen. Yeah, I think she might be frozen. I have it too. Uh, okay. Hold on. Wait, wait. I'm just gonna rejoin, Jessica. Tell him I'll rejoin. Oh, you're right. good now, Diane. You're right. good now. Am I back? You? You're back. Oh. Okay, Jim, I, what, what do you know about what's coming that impacts me today or the conversation that's happening? I think I, I've worked really hard for the last 20 days. I think it would be a courtesy to at least let me know what's coming at me. Yeah, I'm going to talk to some counselors today uh, as I try to before every meeting and uh, see what uh, their plans are. And, and if I get any sense of what's going on, I'll try to give you a heads up. Are you, would you support a vote of non-confidence in me? Um, I haven't decided that yet. Okay, thanks. All right, well listen, I appreciate uh, the heads up. I, as I said, I, I hope that there's, um, that you don't rush into this because I think it would be a, a mistake uh, at this point. <clears throat> and I think it would undermine Steve Bell to have someone, he's, you know, come in uh, literally, you know, two or three days after what, what could have been a, um, you know, a police action to try to solve this nightmare we're all living through. 
There are a lot of people in the upper ranks, just so you understand, that do not support Steve Bell right now. And it's part of what's happening inside. I, I, do you know? Never mind. Never mind. What's, there, the, what's the changes the changes to the command structure that you're making? It, that your press release talked about. It, it's the it's the advisory body that would come with this new chief that has OPP and everyone else with that kind of experience in terms of organization to get this done. It's actually it, it's actually a really good plan, Jim. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, listen. Thank you for the heads up, and uh, we'll see you on Zoom later. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you.